G'day guys, Tills20 here and welcome back to Marble Mountain. Today we're going to be working on the first toll booth of Montana and also working around the Bay Bridge area which is uh, a bridge that I originally had in Montana when I first started the series but I got rid of it just to while I was reshuffling the suburbs of Montana and now that the suburbs are right in place I've got a better location to place down that bridge. Um, right now though you are seeing some different shots of Marble Mountain, you're seeing some nighttime shots which are something that I don't usually do. Um, I'm a bit, I don't really know how I feel about the nighttime view of uh, city skylines and um, I actually had a lot of fun recording some of those cinematics. This was actually requested by someone in the last video so I thought it's been a while since we've done any nighttime shots, shops, shots, <laughs> uh, yeah so I decided to um, put some in. and. Um, yeah, so we're going to be working on the bridge leading into Montana. Now, um, this is now in a different location to where I originally had it. Um, I built this headland in the last episode, no, two episodes ago. I built a headland and um, I thought that this would be a pretty cool location for the bridge. I think it'll be a little bit more iconic and a little bit further out of the city, which I also wanted to do. This is... Um, really on the outskirts of the city. I think around this area I'm mostly going to have like beach um, beach suburbs and uh, like sl slightly more like parkland areas and that's going to be pretty much it. So I'm also going to be detailing a bit of the headland too just so that everything fits in place. And I don't really finish off anything in this episode. I um, The headland's like somewhat finished but I probably will redo a couple of bits and pieces and I intend to finish off everything else in the next episode where I work on some railway as well and all that sort of good stuff. Um, so Bay Bridge, this is like my, one of my favorite bridges in City Skylines um, that was created by uh, Bisqueakelhausen. Uh, I really love this asset. Um, I'm probably doing a bad job at placing it down in this episode. I did originally do it like the last time I placed it down. I followed this tutorial to a T because it is really really useful. I'll actually leave that in the description below if you want to place this bridge down for yourself. Um, yeah, there's a great tutorial that goes with this but um, I decided just to have a go myself and you know he's either cringing watching this video or he's um, maybe proud that I am still achieving a somewhat of a decent look. I don't know. Jay if you're watching please um, be kind. Um, I do think it turned out pretty alright and um, yeah, I really like the location. I think it's it makes for some really great shots of Montana, which um, I'll I've got some good cinematics at the end that really showcase everything. But to be honest, I think the easy part was placing down the bridge, and the hardest part was trying to figure out the transition from the bridge to the highway because obviously with the highways in city skylines, they're two separate roads going in either direction. Um, at least the ones that I'm trying to connect up. There are also three lanes, so I was trying to figure out a realistic way of making it so they connect to the bridge, and that's where I got the idea of the toll booth. I actually wasn't going to do a toll booth here, I was going to do it in another location, but it just sort of worked. And you can also see that I've used a main road too, so obviously that's not a highway, um, it does slow down traffic quite a bit, but I figured, considering the the traffic's already slowed down because of the um, because of the toll booth. It wouldn't really matter too much, and like I don't really mind the way that the transition happens with this. I think it still looks quite realistic. It's probably the best way I could do it. I was actually originally going to, and I think you saw me do it in the first little bit. I was um, planning on hiding a lot of the uh, the messiness of the connection between the two different types of roads um, within a tunnel, and then. That way you don't actually see it unless you're in tunnel view or transparent view. That didn't really work out how I really wanted it because I did still want to see quite a lot of traffic flow and um, I figured if I was to do some sort of like messy interchange underground then it wouldn't really work very nicely. But I'm actually really glad that I did end up choosing the toll booth because I think it makes a lot more sense and I actually found out that um, you know looking over um, a couple of different locations that have very similar bridges but I was really mostly looking at the Golden Gate Bridge in San Fran. I um, yeah noticed that there was also a toll booth in a similar location so that also was quite a bit of source of inspiration and gave me a good idea of how to um, sort of structure my uh, my toll booth and 
how to figure out how the roads and everything are going to connect up. Um, something that I also noticed with the toll booth, and I tried to read up a little bit about this toll booth in particular, but you know, like in all my videos, I didn't really do a hell of a lot of research. Um, but basically, there's only one side of the uh, road is tolled, whereas the other side isn't tolled. And I, then I was like trying to find other locations where it was tolled. So I'm not really sure why one lane is. Um, you know, you have to pay money to use it and on the other side there isn't. It kind of doesn't make much sense to me, so maybe there's some other system in place. If you're from San Francisco or have ever been there, um, let me know in the comments where, like, what I'm missing. Um, but what I thought was a good idea is to have this building that's also connected to the toll booth. So I've actually just used a, um, a vanilla office block and just used it twice to make it just a little bit bigger and just turned it into like a bit more of an administration building. And then um, with the rest of the space, I figured that this might be a good location for maybe like a bit of a, uh, like a restaurant or a cafe, because now that we are getting out of the city, people are probably stopping here to, um, you know, do a couple of things. And um, as they're leaving the city or coming into the city, they might need to fill up petrol or something like that. Even though I don't place in a petrol station in this location, I plan to in the next episode. This whole area is going to be, um, it's going to be like a very small suburb that's going to be here and the rest of the area is going to be mostly parkland. Uh, I probably will also increase the amount of tourist um, locations around here so I think it might be cool to see maybe like a sightseeing bus come through and like a lookout but I didn't really get to that in this episode. Instead I just painted around a bike path and um, thought that that would be all right for this side and maybe on the other side of the harbor I might do something else that um yeah that's a bit more based around like people just coming to look at the bridge but this bridge probably isn't as famous as the Golden Gate Bridge it's probably somewhat iconic to Montana but uh you know the Golden Gate Bridge is one of the most famous if not the famous city uh, uh what do you call it bridge in the world uh up there with probably the Sydney Harbor Bridge maybe being a bit biased there but yeah, there's like a lot of touristy areas that you can get a good glimpse of that bridge and I would also like to include like a couple of areas like that, but um, yeah, probably in a different location. What I'm um, trying to work on right now is I really struggled with working with the vanilla assets to create this um, like a more realistic toll booth. The, um, the toll booth as it is right now is, you know, like the vanilla version of the toll booth is fine, but it's... It lacks a lot of detail that you do have to put in yourself. So I've actually put in a wall that's dividing the um, the road up just a little bit because I figured it's, it's quite there's quite a lot of traffic coming in here, so we need some sort of barrier. Being a vanilla build, I'm trying to work with what I got. Um, there's also, as you can see, there's like uh, connecting roads in between, uh, like connecting up to the toll booth, which is actually I thought would be a terrible place to have an intersection but you know looking at the toll booth on the Golden Gate Bridge it's actually somewhat like this too. I actually ended up removing one of the connections because I thought it was a bit overkill plus if people really wanted to um, avoid the toll they could just take one of the roads and avoid the toll completely so that didn't make a lot of sense so um, I ended up getting one of the connections of the road so that it does make more sense so you just have to wait for that just shortly when I start rejigging everything there's actually going to be quite a lot of trial and error in this episode. I usually cut a lot of that out, but I thought for this episode I might do something a bit different and just leave a bunch of it in so that you can see some of the things that I'm trying out and then I'm going to redo and that way you can sort of see my headspace when I, when I come into building these things. You know, quite often I think that people think that I just build the way I build from the get-go and that's not usually the case. It usually takes me a couple of goes or I might have a bit of an idea of what I'm going to be doing to achieve that look like I might have done something similar in another build or in an, uh, another another city. This this build I had never worked with the toll booth before in this manner at least and working with just vanilla assets was really quite tricky. So now that I know how to use the assets that I have to create a toll booth like this, I think it's going to be a lot easier going into building more of these and I was actually sort of hoping that this would create a bit of revenue but we're still as you can see quite in the negative all right what you see me doing right now is I'm just letting the traffic flow through because I like for two reasons basically I wanted to see 
if it worked and that like the nodes weren't making cars do weird things um, because that was quite important to make sure that they actually connected up in a correct manner um, they can also see some cars taking some shortcuts too which is pretty cheeky of them I also thought I'd record this because I think it looks quite cool um, I recently went into my options I actually within this episode I went into my options of my uh, traffic president mod and reshuffled a couple of things that I hadn't had activated which um, is actually quite crazy that I've never activated these things uh, so for instance I've changed it now to advance uh, I think it might be lane changing AI and um, there's also like better parking and stuff like that which I'm pretty sure most people have already enabled but for some reason I hadn't enabled those um, aspects of the mod yet I haven't really been using the mod like a hell of a lot I know a lot of people use it a lot more than I do um, and I believe I might have turned them off because during the live plays it can actually slow down things quite a lot but when I'm recording these time lapses I don't really mind too much if my frame rates um, a whole lot less um, what I'm doing right now is I've actually deleted that medium that I created before with the concrete wall between the two roads and um, I thought I put in a hedge you've also seen me now delete that um, other road that I said I was gonna delete and um, because I don't have any Jersey barriers, I'm not subscribed to any, I thought I'd create my own ones with this concrete wall. It's slightly different color than you'd probably expect, but I still think it looks quite cool because it sort of shows that there was, there is like still a connection between the two roads, but um, it's just blocked off with um, these Jersey barriers, which I think is um, quite fitting for the area too. Um, I'm actually really all over the place in this episode. I um. Yeah, like I detail one area and then I decide to change something different and that's why I'm kind of jumping all over the place. Uh, now putting a little bit more effort into the um, the uh, the, ca the cafe area because um, I did want to have this area to um, like attract a few tourists, a lot of people who are coming out this area just to um, check out the headland or maybe go down for a surf. Uh, this area wanted to have a bit more of a... Um, a bit more establishment for a park and I thought a cafe and maybe a burger joint would probably be the best fitting for it too. Um, like I said before I'm gonna redo quite a lot around here and um, really turn it into quite a big parkland so that it's um, yeah so we're seeing quite a lot of foot traffic. Now um, like I said before I wanted there to be a couple of buildings around here but I didn't really know the exact type um, I ended up going for this science center which was introduced in the uh, campus DLC there's like a whole bunch of really nice buildings I've already placed one of these types of buildings down before I think it might be a museum and that's in the heart of the city but I thought considering that this is a bit more of a science center and um, there's also this uh, telescope as well um, I thought that we probably need to place this a little bit out of the city but obviously not too far away I think that this area is perfect for it it also um, attracts a bit of tourism um, I think it's quite realistic to have something like this out this way and um, I did want to find a building that was uh, like quite a, a much larger building than some of the other buildings you might find that um, are growables yeah I think this works really nicely I originally wanted to create a bit of a parkland for this science center and um, have like a really nice manicured lawn and um, a bit more parkland around here but I decided to just place down a custom built parking lot and then um, kept the whole area to be a, a little bit more um, kind of untamed uh, landscape instead because um, yeah, I tend to go a little bit overboard when it comes to detailing or a little bit overboard when it comes to uh, placing down things and sometimes you just got to let things go and just accept that some places can just have a lot of natural beauty rather than having to place down a whole bunch of buildings and parking lots and stuff like that even though I am placing in a parking lot right now <laughs> uh, I figured a um, custom built one would probably fit better in this location plus it's on a bit of a slope too so the other parking lots that I have won't really contour to the land quite as well as a custom built one um, what else can I talk about? Um, I'm really loving these vanilla bushes that was introduced in the Park Life DLC. They add so much foliage to underneath the trees that um, 
that they come in really handy, particularly for builds like this. I'm actually using them a lot in my new series, just a couple of little hints about that. Uh, still keeping that pretty secret, as you can probably tell, but um, yeah, using quite a lot of those, even though they're vanilla. Um, by the way, that new series is still being worked on. I am um, creeping ever so closer to releasing a teaser for it. Um, let's just say it's not going to be a vanilla series. It's um, going to be heavily modded and it's going to be done in quite a different way. So yeah, more details to come about that. Um, this area I end up deleting, <laughs> which seems to be the theme for this episode. Uh, this whole road down here, I wanted it to like snake underneath um, like around the uh, coastline here, but then I thought it was a little bit overkill in terms of roads and uh, decided just to get rid of it. There's also a huge difference in the land and um, well, like the land height and um, that was quite tricky to deal with. Um, as always in this series, I always tend to build with um, landscape that is quite uh, mountainous. It seems to be my preferred way of building. I think it creates much more interesting cities, but yeah, this the difference in this height is massive and found that a bit of a struggle to deal with. So hence the reason why there's a lot of bushland and um, a lot more parks too. It actually just makes it a lot easier than having to channel in some roads because they're quite tricky to get to contour to a um, quite rocky terrain. Um, this is a just a very easy park that I'm building and just placing down some trees and not really doing any other detail work besides some foliage and a couple of the palms that seem to be to seem to be a bit of a uh, feature within this series. Um, you also saw that I had placed down a wind turbine, which is purely there because there's no power. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have to um, do that. That's one thing that's really annoying with the series is that I um. Yeah, that a lot of places don't get power unless I place down a wind turbine. So there's a couple of places that I've had to just place down a cheeky wind turbine so that I can get a bit of power to that area. Now I'm working on some coastline, which I haven't really done a huge amount of detail work with in Montana, um, in Marble Mountain, I should say. This is, um, I guess, the furthest out into the sea that we're going to get. And I wanted just to figure out how I was going to develop this coastline. I've taken a lot of inspiration for the California coastline, keeping things quite arid and also quite mountainous because the mountains around the California coastline is pretty, it's pretty dramatic and pretty amazing. Actually, I know I'm generalizing a lot when I say California. Ge California does stretch quite a big distance. Um, I guess I'm more focusing around San Francisco and Los Angeles, where it's really quite amazing um, in terms of the landscape. Um, also, by the way, you probably can tell that I am obviously not from America, and I, quite often when I talk about places in America, I, I tend to get them wrong. Like in the last episode, I was calling the area that I was taking inspiration from, I think I was saying it was San Francisco, but it was really Oakland. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone for being like so uh, understanding when I make comments like that. I know it's not a huge deal, but you know, people are generally like, oh, hey, you've got the wrong place. You know, try, you know, try calling it a different name. Yeah, I think it'd be really weird if I was to watch somebody rebuild Sydney and they were like calling places that were very much not Sydney different names. Uh, yeah, I think that would be really strange <laughs> to watch somebody build Sydney who's not Australian, um, which must be quite strange watching. Actually, uh, to be honest, I don't know how you guys can watch what I do because quite often I'm building in America and I am generally making some big generalizations about a country when really I don't really know a hell of a lot. It's just basically focusing on Google Earth and that's it. Uh, yeah, so yeah, thanks for you guys always being so kind with my comments. You guys are very understanding. I, I feel like City Skylines, I think we have like a very, very nice community. Uh, I know I've said this before, but I feel really lucky to be doing what I am doing in a community like I have because um, I don't think I've got the confidence to, <laughs> to deal with the hate that some of the other YouTubers get, uh, to be honest. I think the worst comments I get are people correcting some of the dumb things that I say or not agreeing with some of the things that I've built, but it's always done in such a respectful and kind way. Uh, yeah. So, legends. Legends. Uh, 
last things that I'm doing for this episode is detailing the coastline and trying to um, figure out the exact type of foliage I want around this coastline. Like I said before, I am such a fan of these vanilla shrubs, so I am placing a lot of them around here. I think I ended up culling a bit of them because I do go a little bit overboard. Um, trying to stay clear of some of the bigger trees and I'm mostly placing down these bushes instead because they work really nicely to really emphasize how um, like how big this area is. Even though it's not very big, like this headland, it's actually quite small. So I'm giving a bit of an illusion to um, yeah, trying to create a bit of an illusion by using some of the smaller trees because they make the rest of the landscape look quite big. That's a, that's a little technique that I've been using quite a lot. But guys, that's it for this episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've got any suggestions or um, ideas, don't forget to check out the Discord as well. And we also have a wiki page about Marble Mountain. So if you want to put in some names or ideas or backstories about some of the things that are around here then that's always like a really great place to add in a bit of your own spark to the place because we're really starting to develop this city this whole region that's really starting to come along but guys thanks so much for watching really really appreciate it um i'll see you in the next one bye